guys, give me Magic 13 here, and welcome back to some more Back to the Future, the game. In the last episode, we discovered that we landed in the wrong time due to, um, miscalibrating time circuits, I think? Anyway, so in today's episode, we're going to be convincing Edna to break up with Emmett. It's pretty straightforward. Alright, so Edna's over here, so let's just go over and talk to him, shall we? Talk to him. Talk to her. Spell it. B-R-O-W-N. It's not exactly an obscure name. I still don't see it on the list. I'm sorry. Oh, for the love... Let me try this one more time. This is the Hill Valley Science Expo, right? First annual. Indeed. The purpose of our fair is to showcase cutting-edge technology. That's right and to burnish Hill Valley's reputation as a forward-thinking community. And yet, you want to exclude the maker of the most revolutionary breakthrough of all. It's not that I want to, but... Oh, dear. Mr. Crockett! You do pop up at the oddest times. What are you doing here? Haven't heard that one before. I need Whatever to... it is, I hope you don't have to deal with Mr. Stonewall here. His sole function seems to be preventing people from accomplishing their business. Honestly, with him keeping the books, it's a wonder the Tannen gang got as far as they did. Uh... Have you seen Emmett? Uh, no. Oh, then you've heard all about his big breakthrough, the mental alignment meter. Isn't it exciting? And to think, he didn't even realize the import of his discovery until I pointed it out to him. I've never known anyone like him, so oblivious to his own potential. I kind of wanted to talk to you about Emmett and his potential. Funny, I didn't spot it myself at first. In fact, for the longest time, I thought I didn't even like him. <laughs> yeah. I don't get it. I mean, Emmett's nice and all, but he's not exactly the kind of guy that has girls swarming all over him. Well, I'm not your average girl. Yeah, but... I appreciate your concerns, Mr. Crockett, but I can take care of myself. I know what I'm looking for in a man, and it so happens Emmett fits the bill to a T. That's Emmett Brown. Rhymes with clown, which I'm beginning to think you are. Just a simple mix-up, I'm sure. I've no doubt of that. Emmett Brown. Rhymes with clown. I love that. All right, so I think we have to wait. Is the guy over here yet? Guy is not over here yet. So looks like I'm gonna have to talk to Edna, Edna again. Ahem. <clears throat> you said that Emmett fits your bill of requirements for a man. Yes. What would that list be exactly? You'd make a good reporter, Mr. Crockett. You know that. Well, his physical appearance for one thing. Emmett may not be Clark Gable, but he cleans up surprisingly well. I gave him my grandfather's white suit to wear at the expo. Oh, you should see him in it. He looks positively radiant. Looks good in a suit. Got it. And he's completely devoted to me. That's important. I've got no time or tolerance for playboys. Faithful as a Labrador. Check. Thirdly, and most important... Yes? Well, his mind, of course. It's brilliant, and it's virtuous through and through. His own mind map shows him to be a model citizen. Good brain, I see. And if it turned out that you were mistaken about any of these qualities... Say, what's your game? Uh, just curious, just trying to understand the female mind. Well, understand this. I'm not some faint-hearted girl who'd run away at the first hint of trouble. I've made a big investment in Emmett. Not money, but I've sunk all my ambitions into him. I'd have to be thoroughly disillusioned before I'd call it quits with Emmett. Got it? Uh-huh. Now, Mr. Cub Reporter, is there anything else? That's all the questions I got. Very well, then. Hey, Artie. You see my Orioli? You mean this? Yeah, thanks. 
she gets to come and go freely, and I'm forced to wait. I love it. Okay, so now Trixie's here, so we can go and talk to Trixie. You can probably imagine how this is going to end up, but whatever. <clears throat> to all who approach these hallowed halls, I bid thee welcome. Uh. To all who approach these hallowed halls, I bid thee welcome. To all who... Oh, hiya, kid. Say, aren't you the fellow who... Got you to turn on Kid Tannen? You bet. You look younger without your mustache. That was a dirty trick, you know, making me think Kid had gone and iced Audie. I'm sorry, but it was the only way I could... Ah, forget about it. I'm trying to. Yesterday's in the past. That's my motto. You gotta live for today. Right. So what are you doing down here anyway? Do you wish to pull the levers that control the future? Ah. Uh. At the expo, silly. Technology for a better tomorrow and all that. Oh, uh, yeah, that's actually why I'm here. Listen, I've got a proposal for you. I have this friend, right? No dice. I'm only seeing Audie now. It's not like that. See, my friend's in a relationship with Edna Strickland. Oh, poor schmuck. I wouldn't wish her on anyone. Then you see where I'm coming from. He won't listen to reason, but I thought she might call it off if she thought he and you were, you know. Ah, you are an evil imp, ain't ya? Sometimes a guy's gotta resort to underhanded tricks. What do you say? Sorry. Ah. Oh. Edna might be a pill, but if I play dirty tricks on every dame who disapproves of me, well, well, I'd, I'd play a lot of dirty tricks. Besides, such stunts are beneath the dignity of Techni, Muse of Progress. Look, my friend Emmett really needs help. The one who's going out with Edna Strickland? You're darn right he needs help. I'm not asking you to actually seduce him, just make her think that you two have a thing going. It'll drive her crazy. <laughs> I guess it would. So? Uh-uh. I wouldn't do that to another girl unless I was good and mad at her. And besides, it might tarnish my image as a muse. Okay, so now we gotta figure out how to get Trixie mad at Edna. And the only way we can possibly do that is if we... Well, I know what we have to do. But there's a certain person that has to spawn in for us to do it. Has he spawned in yet? No. Kewel has to spawn over by that truck for us to actually get anywhere at the story, so. Until the- Aha! I think I remember. I think we have to talk to Edna again. Ahem. <clears throat> Back again, Mr. Crockett? What can I help you with? Well, I was thinking. That's all the questions. Ah, oh, God. Mm. How about you? And then, I am a- Maybe this time I can click on Edna Ahem. without skipping out of the menu. Thinking. Talk to Trixie. I found out about Trixie Trotter. Yes? Apparently they made her some sort of queen of the festival. Techni, the muse of progress. They didn't. Well, they said this expo would give Hill Valley a reputation. I didn't realize this is what they meant. What have you got against Trixie? It's the idea of it. Allowing our city to be represented by a woman like that. I won't stand for it. As a socially conscious citizen, I demand you discharge that muse. Trixie? What's wrong with her? Oh, she's hardly qualified for an honorific post at a public event. Look, lady, she fits the costume, she's an American citizen, and she managed to memorize all her lines. What more qualifications do you want? Oh, these people are impossible. Why do you want to get Trixie fired? One simply can't allow women like that to attain positions of respect in society. It creates a very bad precedent for the future. Does it? But try telling it to this poor sap. She's got him completely steamrolled. That's how they operate. Is it? Still, I could get her discharged if I had the goods on her. No doubt a woman like that has left a trail of scandal, and I'd find it if I were still a reporter. 
But I haven't got time to do the legwork now. I'm too busy with Emmett and our... his invention. That's all the questions I got. Very well, then. As you can see. And I suppose you are... Still looking. <sighs> As you can see, Q-Ball has now spawned in over by the truck. So we can head over to the truck and talk to him. Now, my microphone would say still. Not as nice as my truck back in 86. Jeez, I hope I still have a truck back in 86. I wanted to talk to Q-Ball, not the truck. Hey, pal. Oh, jeez, this guy again. Funny, I was gonna say the same thing. Will you be playing piano for Trixie later? Nah. Why not? Cause Little Miss Goody Two Shoes thinks she's too respectable for cue ball these days. You seem kinda angry about Trixie. Angry? Listen, kid, me and Trixie go way back. I know stuff about her that even kid doesn't know. Stuff that curl your socks. Really? Oh yeah. And now to see her flouncing around the place, making like her stink don't smell, it just well, it just cheeses me off, you know? So what's so, uh, toe-curling about Trixie's past? Yeah, like I'm gonna tell you. Oh, come on! No. Tell you what, I'll tell you something embarrassing about me first. Like what? Well, under the influence of alcohol, my mom made a pass at me. Ooh! All right, Junior, you win. That was pretty embarrassing. Almost as embarrassing as this. Whoa. Is that Trixie? Yep. She's not wearing much. No kidding. She did a lot of these artistic postcards a few years ago. I got a whole set of them. Can I, um, have one? I don't know. You ain't gonna do nothing bad with it, are you? Hey, I promise. I'll only use it for the greater good. Well, okay. Hang loose, pal. You talk funny, mister. Okay. Now that we've got some dirt on Trixie, we can show it to Edna. Also, I find it kind of odd how Q-Ball doesn't notice us showing the picture that we promised we wouldn't show to anybody to Edna when she's, he's standing right over there. But whatever. I want to take a look at this. Why in the world would I be interested in... Oh, what have we here? Oh, sir! Mr. McFly! It appears your muse has been inspiring more than progress. Trixie? Oh, no, no, no. What are you doing with a dirty postcard? What is she doing in a dirty postcard? I swear, Mr. McFly, if that doesn't convince you that Trixie Trotter is unfit to represent Hill I Valley... I don't need you to lecture me about who I can or can't hire, Miss Strickland. Trixie's darn good at what she does. I don't care if she was once the winsome wench of Winnipeg. Her past doesn't matter to... Trixie? What is it, Audie? You know I don't like to pry, but what state did you grow up in? Province, Manitoba. Why? Not even an American. See, darling, the charter specifically states that the Expo's hostess must be a U.S. citizen, so if you're really a Canadian... I'm being fired? Are you are firing me? I don't want to. Here, take it back. Well, I'm glad somebody's listening to reason. Let's talk. Alright, so now that we've got Trixie into the scam... Trixie? I'll do it! I'll make that blue-nosed bitty eat her heart out! That's great! I got it all planned out. When Emmett shows well, we up... we gotta do it my way. Huh? I'm no good with improvising, and I ain't gonna memorize no lines. 
what I was in this play once. The Paula Maid's predicament. I figure I could lift a scene from that. Okay. Only, I need a few props. Why am I not surprised? Some furs, a big diamond. It doesn't have to be real, understand? That makes it easier. And something from this friend of yours, Emmett. Has he got a photo album? I don't know. Uh, probably. Better bring it to me. Furs, a diamond, and Emmett's photo album. And then? Sit back and watch the fur fly. Alright. Now we just gotta get to Emmett's lab. So let's go ask Doc. Where that would be. Ah, good. You're back. Give me the full report. She says she likes you because you've got a virtuous mind, you look good in a suit, and you're completely faithful to her. Damn, she's got me dead to rights. Well, you'll just have to find a way to change her mind. I'll be here if you need any help. Do you need any help? So... Only one thing we... Why would she believe? Did not mean to click that. Then you'll have to resort... Okay, so, how's the Lorraine? Have you figured out what's wrong with the time circuits? Not sure. Possibly. It seems to me to be a simple wiring issue, but I'm double-checking to make sure. All the basic equipment appears to be functional. Um, any chance I could borrow the DeLorean? I want to drop in on young you at the lab. Well, I don't know. The time circuits... Listen, I promise I won't take it to 88. Even so, I'm worried about letting it out of my sight while it's still behaving unpredictably. Tell you what, I'll take it on a test drive one minute into the past. If it passes the test, I'll let you borrow it. Didn't it? I'm afraid not. In fact, the discrepancy appears to be getting worse. I arrived six hours ago. Oh, too bad. I didn't want to risk undoing any of the work you've done thus far, so I kept out of sight. But the time lag wasn't entirely a waste. I stopped by the hardware store and bought the part for a chronometric analyzer. A what? A diagnostic device. See, I plug it into the time circuits and set them to cycle. When the green light goes off, I should have the data I'll need to understand the scope of the problem. Hey, no driving the exhibits off the lot! Looks like you'll have to find another set of wheels if you want to get to the lab. I know exactly where I'm going to find another set of wheels. Right here. In the Hill Valley of the Future. See this train of the future? It's like a skateboard, doesn't it? My future wouldn't be built so shoddily. Uh, hi, Miss Strickland. I was just... Break what you like, Mr. Crockett. It's no skin off my nose. Just keep away from Emmett's booth. Speaking of whom, I'd better go see what's keeping him. Um... I'll go check on him for you. I was just heading there anyway. No, you weren't. The last thing he needs is another distraction at the 11th hour. But... Tut -tut. Not another word. I've got the rest of the day all mapped out. Miss Strickland! I'm sorry, I don't recognize you. Heavens, you've shaved off your hair, but... Carl Sagan? I'd like a word with you, if I may. I'm not sure it would be seemly for me to be seen in the company of an alleged arsonist. I think it may be in your best interests. You see... Let's go somewhere where we can talk privately. Go. I'll keep her occupied till you get back. Alright. I'm just gonna get this diamond really quickly. The century looks bright for our fair metropolis. Of course, you one of these buttons does something. There we go. No. What's the third button? Okay. Perfect. It's press the fourth button from the left and the third button from the left. And then. 
why they're underground. Instant diamond. A network or of diamond shaped prism that is borrowing it. Okay, so let's just go give this to Trixie real fast, and then that'll be for this episode. So, um, once again, glitched up controls are glitched up. Give this to her. Voila! Say, pretty snazzy for a phony rock. Gimme. Keep that up, and I may take a real shine to ya. I'd rather you take a fake shine to Emmett. I'm working on it. How about the furs in the photo album? I'll get them to you. Okay. So, thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to leave a like and a comment on the video if you enjoyed. And if you really enjoyed, be sure to click that subscribe button because we did something out of ton. And until next time, it's been Keeping Magic 13. Standing off saying, hope you have a good day, and I'll catch you guys next time for some more Back to the Future the game. Goodbye! <laughs>